Hi, this is Bill Hammond. I'm here to talk about legal planning for the Alzheimer's patient. Of course, what we're trying to do here is to set the foundation so that you and your loved ones are never out of money and out of options. And the question for today's video is, how does this whole process work as far as Medicaid qualification is concerned for a single person? Now, of course, if you have a loved one with Alzheimer's, there's several ways to pay for the cost of care. One way, of course, would be to simply write a check. And in our area, the cost of care is maybe, oh, it depends on the facility, but maybe $5,500 to $6,500 per month or more. And there are very few families who can afford to pay that amount of money. So then you have to look to other funding sources. The next funding source, of course, would be if you were fortunate enough to purchase long-term care insurance uh, several years ago before your loved one uh, came down with memory loss or Alzheimer's. Because lots of times, of course, if someone has long-term care insurance, that will pay the cost of care or at least go a long ways towards paying the cost of care. But what if that's not available? Well, what happens in a lot of those cases then, when someone ultimately needs nursing home care, is the state Medicaid program becomes involved. Here's how it works. If we have a single person who needs care, what the state says is the state says that certain assets are exempt, you don't have to worry about them, and certain assets count. The things that would be exempt would be a house and a car and a prepaid funeral plan, a little bit of life insurance, typically $1,500 cash value or term insurance is exempt, and household goods, furniture, clothing, appliances, all those things that we all own. You set those aside. You don't worry about it. Those are exempt. Pretty much everything else counts. The everything else, of course, would be things like checking accounts, bank accounts, CDs, IRAs, uh, KEO plans, bonds, stocks, mutual funds, all of those types of things. And what the state says is the state says once we've exempted those things we talked about, the house, the car, the prepaid funeral, a little bit of life insurance and household goods, you then have to spend everything else down. Let's take an example. Let's say that we've got a single person with Alzheimer's who needs nursing home care. Let's also say that this person has $100,000 in countable assets. What he or she will then have to do is they'll have to spend those assets down until they get to $2,000 in Kansas or below $1,000 in Missouri. From the time they get to the $2,000 in Kansas or the $999 in Missouri, until they get down there, they are simply private pay. And of course, at a rate of maybe $6,000 per month or more, 70 some thousand dollars a year, it won't take long before they're spent down. Once they get spent down to that level, to where they've met the Medicaid qualification, then what they do is they file an application with the state, they show the state where the money was spent, they go ahead and show them what they have left, the exempt assets, the less than $1,000 in Missouri, $2,000 in Kansas. And at that point, what the state will say is, if everything is in order, the state will say this person has now qualified for Medicaid. Also, once they get down there, once their assets are down to those uh, limits that I've talked about, the uh, individual will then have to turn over their income. Let's say they've got, oh, I don't know, Social Security of $1,000 a month. They'll turn over their income. They'll keep $30 a month if they're in a Missouri nursing home. They'll keep $62 a month if they're in a Kansas nursing home. That's for what we call a personal needs allowance. They'll also keep enough to pay the cost of their health insurance. And the rest of their income will then go to the nursing home as a copay. So for a single person, it's really fairly simple. Take the assets, figure out what counts, what doesn't count, uh, then spend the countable assets down below $1,000 in Missouri, $2,000 in Kansas. Once you get there, turn over your income, keep $62 a month in Kansas or $30 in Missouri, keep enough to pay the cost of your health insurance, and the rest of your income will be a copay to the care center each and every month. Now, 
One of the other things I want to mention is that so many of my clients are veterans, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, whatever. And if they've served during a period of wartime uh, for at least 90 days, if they're honorably dis discharged, and if they have these very heavy costs of care, they may be eligible for what we would call an improved pension. And what this would be is it might be a check every month from the Veterans Administration. Uh, the amount will depend, depend on the circumstances, but maybe anywhere from just under a thousand dollars a month to, you know, maybe fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a month. And that also can uh, go towards paying the cost of care. Now, one of the questions my clients always ask is, can I give my money away? It's actually a very complicated question, and I'm going to deal with that in one of the other videos. So if that's a question you have, then just go ahead and take a look at our website, and uh, you can go to the video where we talk about gifting strategies and what is and isn't permissible. So anyway, that's how you qualify a single person who has Alzheimer's or any other disease for that matter for Medicaid in the states of Kansas and Missouri. I want to thank you to, for uh, tune, tuning into our series on uh, caregiving for Alzheimer's families, and be sure to uh, poke around the website. There's all kinds of videos here on topics that I find are of great interest uh, to my clients and their families. Thank you.